Welcome to Confessions of an SEO. This is Carolyn Holzman. I appreciate the fact that a lot of SEO podcasts are trying to help you get a leg up on the tactics of SEO. Here, it's about how to relate to people as SEOs, as practical humans, to get our heads out of the Google Webmaster Guidelines and be real for a moment. If you're an SEO, I get you. If you're a business owner, I get you too. Before being an SEO, I also was a local business owner driving to traffic to get to my office and constantly thinking about how to get more customers for my production company. I hope this helps you understand how to hold an SEO accountable to have a better idea of what is and what is in Google so you're not blaming your SEO on something that Google is completely responsible for or driving yourself crazy thinking that you have to be as good at SEO as well. It's not a competition. Welcome to season two, episode nine. It has been a while since I did a Facebook mailbag topic. And I know this one is probably something a lot of SEOs have experienced. But before I start getting into that, I wanted to mention the crawl or no crawl daily broadcasts on YouTube that I started after I revamped the test stack on the indexation project that I've been working on, which honestly surprised the heck out of me because I didn't think going back to doing something daily like that was in my future, but there you go. Never say never, right? If you haven't subscribed, this is where instead of writing up my notes on the Google index detector page, I talk them, actually go on camera and share my screen and show the index history sheet where all the data is currently being recorded and has been recorded. This past Tuesday marked six months on this project. Wow. Uh, That was a bit of a shocker. Uh, And it's all public. And I think I might have figured out how to get over the new indexing threshold for new content that isn't already in the index. And if you're a new listener, this is where I start to spout blasphemy and where I tell you that Google does not have a supernatural way to know what your page is before crawling it or to know if it's quality enough to index it or not. You should probably hear what I say after a beer, but whatever it is, you're you're likely not doing anything wrong no matter what you hear. Well, that is true unless you've forgotten to uncheck that little box in WordPress that says to discourage search engines. But outside of that, odds are you've hit, you've hit below the threshold. Now, you don't have to be a hotshot web developer or anything technical to get anything out of the daily reports. I'll be turning them into an Alexa daily brief. So all you have to do to hear them would be to tell that little machine. Um, I don't want to say her name because she might start talking. Um, but tell her to add it to your daily briefings. All right, today's topic. I'm calling this episode When Helping Hurts. And this idea came from a Facebook post from someone who had just gotten hired by a company and they were really excited to be working with them. And to be fair, they were specifically talking about a social media con contract. But, you know, we can play Mad Libs on this because it really doesn't matter what type of work it does. We've all experienced when an owner or a stakeholder decides, essentially, they are the boss and that all that's all that matters. So the short version is this person quoted and was hired to manage the social media posts on other accounts of the company, which had a decent following. And they were quoting to continue their posting every week and increase engagement. Sounds pretty straightforward to me. They went to log in with the credentials provided by the client only to be denied. And of course, like any good professional, you know, you call the client up just to verify passwords and logins and make sure that you got everything right. Well, the client responded with, we deleted all the accounts and decided we just want you to start fresh. Well, apparently these were aged accounts started years ago when everybody was engaged and following. 
Now, if you're an SEO, you know what I'm talking about, that sinking feeling in your stomach when you're walking into one thing and now it could be something completely different that you weren't accounting for. Now, I'm assuming the business owner thought they were helping. And it seems like they thought maybe they were dealing or thinking of it more as a new employee instead of a social media expert because I'm at a complete loss as to uncover what value there would be in starting fresh on social social media if you knew what social media actually represents. Honestly, for this person, I really think the best thing would be to requote the project because it is a completely different thing. And yes, they should have talked to you before making such a rash global decision. And sure, you might be able to recover some of those accounts since it just happened, but damn. And to the business owners listening, we mean this with a great amount of compassion. Stop helping so much. Last fall, a colleague of mine who has had a client for years, out of the blue, that client called her and demanded to know what she'd done because their phones had stopped ringing. She hadn't done anything other than what she was expected to do, but she's smart enough to know where to start looking. And she noticed that their map listing was nowhere to be found after spending years in the number one position for their terms. Turns out, The business owner had not only moved the business, they hadn't shared that little gem with their SEO and in the meantime, had updated their map listing only to get it suspended. Again, with love and for the ones in the back, business owners, stop helping so much. If you're wondering why is this such a big deal? Well, the local listing is a huge piece that Google relies on to know where to show you in the map portion, which lives on page one in Google. It's primo real estate. A lot of business comes from in there. And when you do something like this, like when you change something major like address, Google gets really confused. And it's not your SEO's fault. And someone kind of has to tell you that was a, a bonehead thing to do. But then there was a time, uh, going on to the next story, (laughs) there's another time when a colleague was tracking a a new client on a project and they hadn't started anything yet. And suddenly, one day, they noticed that everything was tanking everywhere and he hadn't done a damn thing. This project was from another agency, so he called the agency and let them know what he saw and and to ask if they had done anything because whatever was done, it was not helpful. In fact, it was indeed the exact opposite of helpful. Turns out they hadn't, but when they looked into it further, that's when they had their heart attack. They backtracked and combed through everything, and at one point, someone noticed a recent disavow file that they had not submitted. Turns out the business owner had submitted their own and had disavowed 5,000 backlinks. Again, with feeling and compassion, business owners, stop helping so much. If you're wondering why this is such a devastating thing, you have to understand that the, the content that's on a website is basically what builds the relevance of that website and its pages to the topic. In other words, plumbers got a plum. And in those words, they have to be on your site. Backlinks are the things about your business that appear on someone else's site and they have a clickable link somewhere that if it were clicked, the person who clicked it would actually end up on your website. And these backlinks are how a site builds authority. Now, between these two things, we haven't found the fulcrum, you know, where relevance and authority are are balanced. But the disappearance of 5,000 backlinks would likely be a very rude awakening and unmistakable. If you remember the scene in Star Wars, you know, Obi-Wan kind of staggers back on the Millennium Falcon in in one of their getaways and And he says, oh, I I felt a great disturbance in the force as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. I feel something terrible has happened. 
Yeah. Well, when it comes to chopping off the authority gain from 5,000 backlinks, even 5,000 not so great backlinks. And if you're not replacing any, any of them, well, something terrible will happen. All right. I've got one more and it's about domains. Have you noticed that business owners love domains? I love domains. They love to buy them and they love to point them with no content on the domains. They just point the the domain at the registrar level directly at their main website. Now, this one is a bit of a cautionary tale. It turns out this is a big website, big company, multi-million dollars a year in revenue, and their in-house SEO um, part of their salary was um, commission on sales. So the better the business did, the better that SEO did. And suddenly things changed. And the SEO department's getting blamed, but they couldn't find anything. You know, it's like the site was just really tanking. And so they started digging and ultimately discovered that the business owner, the big kahuna, the one that writes the checks for sure, decided to put a domain or to buy a domain and point it to one of the sites that was one of their big revenue stars. As it so happens, that domain was toxic, likely penalized for whoever used to own it. They did something and it just just didn't work or it worked to a point and stopped. And that's what got it penalized. So, you know, when it got directed, this, this toxic domain got directed toward the money site, all that toxicity slimed the money site. You know, it created a a pathway for everything to run downhill and you know what runs downhill. So when they were able to take off the redirect, sure, as the sun comes up in the morning, the site went back to normal positions. So again, with deepest respect, business owners, stop helping so much. But what's a business owner to do if they don't want to feel left out of the fun? you know, when they want to play around in their own marketing, because after all, it is their business. You know, every example I've talked about, the ones that paid the price were the ones that did the deed. You know, they lost the business that they could have had had they not tried to help. And I, I've spent a lot of time saying, you know, how helping can hurt, but, but is there a way that a business owner can help? All right. Well, Approving content provided that you paid for would be a start. And I don't know how many months I have sat on campaigns because clients did not have the time to approve content. Oh, they sure had the time to go over the search console data and haul everyone in for calls whenever they panicked. But in that case, I think it was someone who felt that their their SEO marketing experience uh, was greater than the SEO agency they hired. But I digress. So what's another possible way to help? You can improve your content. So maybe the next thing is ask, involve yourself with your SEO or digital marketing team and ask them if they can point you to the best performing page so that you know not to mess with it without risking your own income and revenue. You know, if you really want to tweak it, that's worth, if if it's that much value to your company, then it's worth setting up a call to see what you might be risking. And, and you might not, right? It might be okay. But why not do your due diligence? You as a business owner can do that. Let's see. There's another one. Um, if you want to get all trippy in the Google My Business profile, I am just going to call it that. I know Google changed the name, but that wasn't to help us. So that's this is my own little stubborn streak. But if you're in there, do not make changes. You don't know what we know, which is... You can suspend a listing by just looking at it, much less changing the phone number or address. And it's a pain in the neck to get someone actually at Google to reinstate it. So for whatever reason you want to make your changes, sure, you're the boss, but be the smart boss and let the people you hired advise you, or at the very least, tell them you're going to make that change. Their experience should be something you would want to receive the benefit of. It's worth far more than whatever you think you're going to gain when you make those changes that you want to make. I'll just say that flat out. Because the as SEOs, the good ones, are looking out for your benefit. They aren't having power struggles over who gets to make these decisions. 
Typically, they're just trying to do their job and to create the revenue return for you and protect what you already have, as well as grow your your exposure. You know, it would be swell if it were understood that as, as SEOs, these situations like this pain us greatly. We don't expect to know everything, but we do expect that if you're paying for SEO, the very least you might do is include us in on those episodes of decision making that that very well, you know, if you just floated your idea, you might have benefited from the experience and knowledge that you already pay to have access to. Then your helping can be more profoundly helpful to you and to develop real trust and respect between you and your SEO team or agency. Well, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for being a listener and special thank you to the sponsors of Confessions. You know, you're just encouraging me, I swear. (laughs) Please subscribe to Confessions. I found out it's how podcasts get rated. And Confessions is everywhere you can find podcasts. If you like Audible, Spotify, Amazon Alexa, or if you just Google Confessions of an SEO, you can't miss it. And don't miss your daily dose of crawl or no crawl. To find it, just search for crawl or no crawl YouTube. All of us stand to make more business and success together when both the SEOs and the business owners understand each other and Google better. It's been my pleasure to be your host. Thank you for your time. And I'll see you in the surfs.